Welcome to TC Media's election night coverage, the first returns. It's a little after 8 o'clock and the voting is completed here in Thurston County. We'll bring you the local results as soon as we get them. I'm Deborah Vinsel, CEO here at TC Media, and we're so glad you could join us tonight. We have several special guests joining us via Zoom. Karen Tweet from the League of Women Voters, Thurston County, and Alexis Walker, Assistant Professor of Political Science and State and Local Government at St. Martin's University, will join us later. But now, it has been our tradition here at TC Media to invite outgoing elected officials to come to the studio on election night. COVID-19 prohibits having studio guests, but we're very happy to welcome via Zoom Thurston County Commissioner John Hutchings. Welcome, Commissioner Hutchings. How are you? Fine, thank you, Deb. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. So first and foremost, I want to thank you for your many years of service. Uh, and ask you if there's anything um, in particular that you would like to look back over the last several years of your uh, tenure as a county commission and, and share with us some of those things that you are most proud that you were able to accomplish or that you and the commission were able to accomplish. Well, my goodness, there's so much and so many things. Um, because I was overwhelmed at how busy it was, not overwhelmed to the point of, uh, of freezing up, but it was so busy. Uh, I'm really proud of the Habitat Conservation Plan being put forth and uh, to the uh, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to where they are accepting it now. And we've begun the uh, NEPA and the SEPA, that's the uh, National and the State Environmental Impact Statements. And they're going to run concurrently. Uh, but that was a huge hurdle. And I threw down the gauntlet last year to U.S. Fish and our staff saying, we've got to get this thing done. We're done chasing our tail in a roundabout. Mm -hmm. Let's get this plan finished and get it to uh, uh, to the uh, the federal solicitor, and so that has happened. Uh, I'm thrilled with all the fish barriers that we have uh, removed in the county to win not only state and national but international awards and recognition for removing uh, salmon barriers. Uh, Boston Harbor, that's coming next year, I believe. But it, 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 it's going to be next year. A new fish ramp, I mean fish, a new boat ramp and parking lot and uh, amenities there at the harbor. Uh, in, uh, it's a partnership that we have with uh, uh, State Fish and Wildlife uh, and the Re Regional Housing Council, getting the county to the table with the cities, dealing with and helping the, uh, the, our homeless population to include the, uh, our parking uh, and RV campers as well. Those are, those are major, major accomplishments, as well as the amount of money that we've given to Thurston Strong, millions to Thurston Strong, and to uh, United Way and Community Foundation of South Sound. Uh, for to help folks uh, through the COVID, uh, keeping their business alive, helping with uh, restarts, uh, helping with rent uh, rent payments and eviction prevention, uh, basic needs for uh, for families and such, uh, but also get businesses going. So it was a ton of money, uh, and it was a lot of fun. So those are incredible and wonderful accomplishments, and I know that um, there's always something that you wish you could have gotten to that you didn't. Is there anything in particular, a specific project that you wish you could have been able to have gotten completed? Well, the, the uh, Habitat Conservation Plan I wish was completed last year or this year. So that's that's been pushed. Uh, the, um, the Boston Harbor uh, boat uh, ramp was going to happen this year. COVID pushed that out as well. Uh, there, there are several different things I wanted to help get done. Uh, but nothing of really huge uh, monumental uh, of import. Uh, but we're, we're making strides, and the, the new commission, the new board is going to continue these efforts, I'm sure of it. Mm -hmm. So you've been a public service, a public servant for most of your career. And I'm wondering if, um, you know, are there, are there folks that you would like to lift up to say thank you to that have helped you along the way? Oh, boy. Uh, in 39 years of public service, it's it's there's we don't have that much time tonight, of course. Uh, but all the uh, my brothers and sisters in law enforcement have been a huge help in, uh, and I'm talking about my supervisors and even those folks that uh, worked for me, uh, helped in uh, informing and shaping who I am. Uh, and uh, I, I would like to thank those folks in particular, my instructors uh, in college. Uh, the chief of police in, uh, in Olympia at the time, Gary Michael, urged me to apply for a Fulbright scholarship. And I thought, yeah, you're crazy. Uh, but I did. And I was awarded 
Uh, I was the only police officer in 2007 to be awarded a Fulbright scholarship to go to England and conduct research for three months. That was a significant emotional experience, life-changing, uh, and it was fascinating work. And I met a ton of uh, new friends and longtime friends over in England too. So I, he mentored me uh, quite a bit. Um, but I, as I, I always try to look forward and not back, look up and not down, and look out and not in, and always lend a hand where I can. So everybody that's done that as well for me, I, I, I appreciate and honor them as well. I just hope I've earned the privilege of, uh, of their time in office. So I would, well, hang on. My, oh, my there's answer. more, go. I would like to, to thank all the supporters uh, in 2016 that propped me into, uh, uh, into elected office. First elected office I've ever had. Uh, and even this uh, go around the, the people that supported me, contributed to my campaign and had, uh, and had faith in me. Uh, I wanna thank them as well. Uh, it's it was it's very much appreciated. So, what's next? Do you have a bucket list that you're trying to check through, or planning to go fishing? No, uh, and, and there's there's value in being bored, or there's value in being uh, to be quiet and re and introspective. But I'm not ready to do that just yet. <laughs> uh, people are saying, "Aren't you just going to rest? Just retire and rest." Well, that's their job, not mine. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got stuff to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I still have several personal uh, things that I'm going to continue on uh, doing. And uh, uh, I don't know if there's going to be a run for office in the future or not. There may be a five-person commission. I've had people tell me or suggest I run for sheriff. I have people suggest I run for uh, Port of Olympia. But I'm, I'm not the least bit interested in that right now. Uh, this is a big big step in in uh, my wife's and my life right now, big change. And so we'll adjust. But I do have some uh, irons in the fire right now. And so I'm, I'm just looking forward, keep my head up and here we go, a new adventure awaits. I wasn't looking for this job and it found me. Uh, so I'm just, I'm very optimistic. So is there anything in particular that you're going to miss about not being in this office? I think the level of activity uh, much like police work, every day is different. It's different issues, different problems, different levels of intensity. Uh, it's always surprising the number of issues that, uh, that come at you from uh, all around 360 degrees. And you've got to be on your toes. You have to be quick thinking. You've got to be ready, relevant, and engaged. Uh, I will miss that. Uh, because it was very much like police work. It kept the adrenaline going. Uh, every day might seem mundane where it's meeting and meeting and meeting. But everyone, each one of those meetings is vital to the citizens of the county and keep the county going. Are there specific challenges facing Thurston <laughs> County that you think um, um, that that the new commission will be dealing with that perhaps are you know kind of on the table right now but haven't bubbled to the surface? Yeah, well, they, it's not so much they haven't bubbled to the surface yet, um, and I'm not a soothsayer, but it's going to be a continued challenge for the new board uh, uh, to address the homelessness issue. Uh, they're not getting smaller, and they're not going away, and you cannot put them in jail and solve the problem. Uh, that's absolutely myopic and old school and, uh, and not practical. Uh, so that's going to be a big challenge. We have the challenge also with the, uh, uh, the RV campers and such. Uh, another challenge is going to be keeping this um, courthouse afloat. Uh, so whatever the reason, blame, 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 why it's in disrepair and what's old and built on the cheap. Uh, do we remodel? Do we expand? What do we do? Uh, that's going to be a challenge for the new commission, especially with uh, in light of uh, budget restraints and constraints. Mm -hmm. uh, our sales tax revenue has been higher than expected or project. The however, is, is that going to be sustainable? I don't know. It's, it's uh, reasoned that our sales tax uh, revenue is much higher than it was projected is because of the pandemic. People are staying home and they're buying. And so uh, the, the tax goes to the point of destination, which for uh, many folks is in the county. Uh, so is that sustainable? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Budgeting, uh, the building uh, is going to be huge and the homelessness issue is still is going to still be very major. So what's your wish list for Thurston County? I wish that the citizens continue to be engaged, uh, educated uh, on the topics, respectful, civil, 
uh, and, uh, and and I know the uh, the new board is going to. Uh, they've got some big challenges, but they're going to have their hands full. But they also have the wherewithal to get it done. I know they do. Well, I want to thank you for taking some time tonight to be with us tonight. And I think I speak for all of Thurston County. I want to thank you for your many, many years of public service, um, from law enforcement to your service as our county commissioner. It certainly has been our uh, pleasure and privilege here at Thurston Community Media to work with you and having you in front of our cameras on a regular basis. And we wish you the very, very best. Deb, thank you very much. It was my passion and life that led me here. And again, I just hope that I've earned the, uh, the privilege of, of the citizens' time. I've enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Hutch. Okay, we're going to take a brief break, and we will be back right after this message. Don't go away. The first returns is coming. Welcome to Thurston Community Media. We're a nonprofit organization that's Thanks, been providing Hutch. services to the greater Thurston County area since 1986. Here at TC Media, we provide everyone with access to media production classes and opportunities to produce your own content. TC Media members get access to our production studios, our high-definition cameras, and airtime on cable TV. To get started, all you need to do is sign up for the orientation, free of charge. Then, once you've decided to be a member, you can take any number of our production classes. We offer intensive training in studio and field production. We also offer audio classes, video editing workshops, iPad production, and much more. Once you're certified, you'll be able to check out professional equipment. And use our facilities to produce your non-commercial show. You can also volunteer as crew on different productions. Once your production is complete, give it to us and I'll make sure it gets on one of our channels. You have the opportunity to share your story with people in our community. So join us here at Thurston Community Media, where we deliver communication resources to build stronger communities. Welcome back to the First Returns. I'm Deborah Vinsel. Um, I've been told that we have some results coming in and our crew is getting them ready uh, to share with you. But right now, I'd like, while we're waiting for that, I'd like to introduce Alexis Walker. Alexis is an assistant professor of um, political science and state and local government at the St. Martin's University. So welcome to the program, Alexis. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Alexis, you joined us last year and we had such a good time having a conversation, but it's so different right now because you know, it's COVID. Um, and so um, I'll be interested in, in getting your, um, you know, your thoughts about uh, what's happening. So um, generally speaking, the electoral process this year, what, are your, what have been your thoughts or what have been your observations? I, I think a lot of it is um, we just don't know. We don't know how things are going to play out in terms of um, what voters are going to do. Um, uh, how COVID is going to affect things. So for instance, are voters going to be more worried about how COVID uh, is being handled or about economic recovery? And that could very much affect the way they vote. Um, and then just the, the way people are voting. Um, obviously in Washington, we're all voting by mail, but across the country, so many people voting in different ways and um, results taking much longer uh, to be found out as a result of all the mail and counting. Of course, we've been an all-male uh, ballot um, state for over a decade now. So, you know, we've kind of come to understand how things just kind of flow along here. So, um, so um, I know that we have some results. Are we going to pop those up? Let me pop those up. So I think we have uh, the numbers for county commission. Right. So in the Thurston County Commission District 1, um, Carolina Mejia has 61 percent of the vote, C. Davis, 38 and a half percent of the vote, 38.63 percent. Um, and Gary Edwards for District 2, the incumbent with 47.41 percent of the vote, but Michael Stedman with 52.25 percent of the vote. And of course, Michael is a Lacey City Council member. So that's an interesting turn of events for this race. Yes, absolutely. Um, usually incumbents have a big advantage, uh, but Stedman is, a, you know, a 
a known character. He uh, serves on Lacey City Council. Um, he also uh, tried to sort of differentiate himself from Edwards by emphasizing sort of a message of inclusion, um, openness to supporting the Black Lives Matter movement with all the protests and the uh, uh, issues surrounding racial injustice. Uh, it's possible that that struck a co chord with voters this election. Mm -hmm. So in the District 1 race, um, C. Davis and Carolina Mejia, Carolina with a substantial um, um, lead there. Um, generally speaking, it has been my experience that our uh, races locally are usually fairly civil. That particular race took on a life of its own this year. Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, and uh, controversial information coming out, the Republican Party polling their endorsement and funding from C. Davis. Uh, so it's, it's not surprising that uh, voters sort of responded and, and saw this, this conflict happening and, and moved uh, to support Mejia. Mm -hmm. I think too in that one, um, I, I think people were very surprised at the number of candidates that were on the primary ballot for that particular race. And of course, we had incumbent John Hutchings and former county commissioner Bud Blake on that primary ballot, but neither of them, you know, with our top two primaries now, neither of them floated to the top. Yeah, sometimes having so many candidates can almost um, split the vote too much and, and lead to surprises that you weren't expecting uh, when you just have, you know, the traditional Republican and Democrat going up, up against each other. Okay, so I'm going to just take a second and ask my control room, do we have other numbers? Okay, okay. well, I'll tell you what. Oh, we have the superior, we have the superior court numbers. Um, Thurston County Superior Court uh, for position eight. Sharon Amambio with almost 60% of the vote, 59.98% of the vote, and Scott Alf, 39.47% of the vote. And, you know, this is one of those races where it, it's for a judicial position, and those always uh, are interesting because of, of how the candidates can respond to questions. Right, that uh, are, they're both nonpartisan, so um, voters don't have that shortcut of a party, uh, party identification to help them make up their minds. This is also a, a tough one for voters that these were two really qualified candidates uh, with a long history of being part of the uh, criminal justice system here in Thurston County. Uh, but um, Amamio uh, uh, emphasized uh, criminal justice reform and inclusion. Um, and if elected, she will be Thurston County's first black superior court judge. Mm -hmm. So what has been your overall, um, in our local race here, uh, our local um, election here, um, were there any surprises for you from your perspective? Uh, in terms of outcomes or... or just the process, the, you know, the, like, well, we just mentioned the District 1, Thurston County District 1, that one was a colorful race, uh, for lack of any other term. Um, was there anything else that you kind of went, huh, that's interesting, or something that was unexpected for you? Well, I don't know if it's unexpected, but I think it was incredibly exciting, the, the turnout rate. So, even not counting today, uh, we had already had the most, the largest turnout in Thurston County in its history at um, over 75%. And that's just a wonderful thing, especially when you have so many local elections going on. Often we have really low turnout. So it's just great to have so many Thurston County residents um, uh, voicing their opinion in these elections. Okay, so we have um, results now for the District 22 position, State Representative Position 1, Lori Dolan against J.D. Ingram. Uh, Lori, the incumbent in there, 69.98% um, of the vote, J.D. Ingram with 30.02% of the vote. So Lori Dolan with a huge lead there. And for um, District 22 Position 2, Jessica Bateman, 63.27% of the vote, Dusty Pierpoint, 36.64. Now both of these folks are fairly well known because Dusty is the former police chief in Lacey and Jessica Bateman, city council member. So, and let's, we had the Senate race also. You can pop that back up. I saw that. It just popped up and I was <laughs> chatting. Up <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, incumbent Sam Hunt with 70.52% of the vote. Uh, the uh, um, Gary Holland with 29.38% of the vote. So, uh, Sam, obviously the incumbent and very well known in the 22nd district. So that's what the 22nd district looks like. Any thoughts? Uh, well, it was 
really interesting with Pierpoint and Bateman that they both do have um, strong roots in the community with Pierpoint as the former chief of police and Bateman serving on city council. Um, Bateman has seemed like a really up and coming star in the uh, Democratic Party and in, in local politics. So it's not surprising to me that she made the jump to um, getting into the state legislature. And I especially think her success on city council with housing policy, mm -hmm. given the persistent um, challenge of homelessness, uh, might have really resonated with voters. Okay, so we're gonna take a little break right now. In 2020, we celebrated the 100th anniversary of women winning the right to vote. So this is an important year for all of us. TC Media participated in a media project funded by the Washington State Historical Society, the Washington State Women's Commission, and the Votes for Women Centennial, because our votes matter. In 1776, only white male landowners over the age of 21 could vote. In 1857, anyone of African descent was denied citizenship and therefore the right to vote. In 1868, the 14th Amendment is ratified. Citizens and voters are defined exclusively as male. The 19th Amendment states, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex. Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. While women earned the right to vote in 1920, state-sanctioned violence continued to limit African-American access to the ballot box. Native Americans were not considered citizens until 1924, and legal barriers to accessing the vote existed until 1947. And for Asian Americans, we couldn't vote until 1952. I vote because it is my right. I vote because it is my duty. I vote because my great-grandmother fought for the right to vote. I vote because my grandmother fought for the vote. Her name was Martha Snelson, by the way. I vote because I want to shape our country. I vote because I want my daughters and granddaughters to shape our country. I'll vote because my voice matters. Yo voto porque mi voz importa. I vote because my voice matters. My voice matters. My voice matters. Because my voice matters. If I'm old enough to fight for my country, I'm old enough to vote. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 changed the law, but voter suppression efforts continue. Our celebration of the centennial of women's suffrage is incomplete without acknowledgement of these inequities. Let's change the country and the world. Here's to the first 100 years of women's suffrage. The first 100 years of women's suffrage. To the first 100 years of women's suffrage and to the next. So here's to the first 100 years of women's suffrage. Alexis, thanks for joining us. If you would just hang on for a few minutes, we're going to come back to you because um, there's a lot more to talk about and we'll have more numbers. And a little bit later, we're going to be joined by some candidates. But right now, I want to take a, mo take a few minutes to introduce Karen Tweet. Karen is the president of the League of Women Voters, Thurston County. For many years, Thurston Community Media has had a partnership with the League to, prevent pro to present programming uh, that provides voter education and information. So thanks for joining us, Karen. We're so glad to have you. Well, thanks for inviting me. I love that video. Congratulations. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? That was, that was by our, our staff, uh, and it was a collaborative process, and I, I know that was a, a really wonderful effort. So 100 years of women's suffrage, uh, and every time I use that word, I almost chuckle because it's <laughs> suffrage is the word. Um, but the League of Women Voters has been around for a long time, too. Can you just kind of fill us in a little bit on the history of the League? Well, actually, for the past year or so, we have been in the midst of celebrations because it's 100 years since women got the vote in 1920. And the League of Women Voters was created trying to get in the center of the frame. <laughs> um, the League of Women Voters was created to support women 
in their new role of voting. And so we have gone along with women's right to vote, supporting women, um, educating them. The league has always been nonpartisan. We wanted to support women of whatever persuasion. And while we study issues, we never endorse candidates or political parties. But I just want to pick up on that the video that um, I loved, My Voice Matters. And I also think it's important to point out that while the US Constitution was changed in 1920 to prevent discrimination against, by sex, you know, in terms of voting, it was many, many decades later that a lot of women of color and indigenous women got the right to vote. And so as we have done our celebrations this year, we've done all kinds of things with masks on and we've done, we've done flag waving, we've stood on camp corners in hats and white dresses. Um, and we've done two acknowledgements of women of color who were part of the suffrage movement, but, but weren't able to take advantage of it at, when they should have been able to. So could you share with us um, what the league is doing locally here in Thurston County? Well, as you might guess from our name, League of Women Voters, we've spent a lot of the last few months focused on, on getting people out to vote. And, you know, our tried and true is what we partner with TC Media on. We do candidate forums where we interview candidates, Republican, Democrat, Independent, and and ask them questions and then make those, that information available widely within our community. And the intent is to support candidates in getting their message out and in educating voters. This year we had a special challenge with, with COVID and we're so grateful to TC Media for your support in helping us figure out how to do our candidate forums via Zoom and, and coaching us through it, coaching candidates through it, and then producing programs that you showed on TC Media and we were able to post on our websites. So that's one big piece of what we've been doing over the last few months. We also had a Be a Voter the campaign where we really tried to reach out to non-traditional voters, students, first time voters, felons, seniors, rural voters with the message of being a voter. And we, we waved signs, we sent out postcards to young voters and we produced two videos that were focused on voting. The, the second one that was produced this year emphasizes Black Lives Matter. And, and Timberland Library System made those videos available on, through their website. So, and, and I'm just touching on the surface of what we're do doing, uh, we did to get out the vote. And, and Alexis, I really loved you mentioning the, you know, what a great turnout we've had this year. And um, I hope the league has played a little part in, in that record turnout. So a um, couple of things I, I do want to kind of clarify with you. The League of Women Voters isn't just for women. No. Actually, we're open to persons. Men and women, however you identify, you are welcome to join us and, and be part of the work we do mm -hmm. um, around voting, around studying issues. Mm -hmm. 
So speaking of studying issues, I know that um, ballot issues and candidate forums are not the only thing you do, and that the League of Thurston County has been doing a lot of work this last year on water issues. Can you share a little bit about that? Absolutely. Thank you for asking about that. Um, we actually have been studying water in Thurston County. It's availability, it's quality. We've been working on a study for a number of years. I think we're going on three years now. We've done a number of forums where we've brought in experts to talk about water in Thurston County. And we have our final forum coming up on November 10th from 6 to 8 p.m. And it's, a, it's gonna be a Zoom webinar as well. And so I would encourage you to go to our website, www.lwvthurston.org, and you can register to participate in that, that water form and, and become part of, of lending your voice to this important issue in our community. And that's coming up on November 10th at what time? Six to eight o'clock. And it's via Zoom, right? Via Zoom. Via Zoom. It's actually a Zoom webinar. A webinar. A okay. Well, Karen, I want to thank you for taking time to be with us tonight. And again, thank you and the League for the partnership that you've had with us over the years to help educate voters in Greater Thurston County. And I'm looking forward to many more. Thank you. And remember, democracy takes time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we've got some more results coming up and um, Alexis has been kind of uh, waiting in the wings to talk about some more things. So um, what have I got? Oh, there's Alexis. Hi, <laughs> welcome back and <laughs> thank you for waiting. So we do have, I think we have some legislative district results coming up. In district two, position two, now the, these upcoming results are for legislative districts that have a piece of Thurston County, but not all, but are not completely um, surrounded by Thurston County. The 22nd district that we talked about a little earlier is entirely within Thurston County, but these upcoming districts are kind of just pieces of Thurston County. The results we're showing you are the results from the entire district. So we've gotten these from the Secretary of State's office. So for State Representative District 2, Position 2, J.T. Wilcox has 64% uh, at 0.64% of the vote. Veronica Rocket with 35.13% of the vote. Um, do you know much about these candidates, Alexis? Uh, Wilcox is the incumbent. He's held the seat since 2010. He's also the House leader uh, for the Republican Party. So uh, this is a, a pretty... A, a steep hill to climb for a rocket to oppose him. She's a young um, uh, member of the Thurston County, like the young Democrats. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, it, would, it wouldn't surprise me to see her run again, but it was a steep hill to climb to try and unseat Right, this to unseat girl. an incumbent with that in that kind of a position. Okay, next up in District 2, we've got um, the State Senate in District 2. Uh, Rick Payne versus Jim McCune. Payne with 37.33% of the vote. Jim McCune, 62.46% of the vote. Uh, McCune is the Republican. He's a current Pierce County councilman. Uh, he had the more sort of established campaign uh, endorsements, clear policies. Uh, Payne uh, didn't have much of a campaign uh, uh, or policy position, so it's not surprising to see McCune in the lead. Okay, moving on. We now have, we're going to look at the results for um, District 20, position one for the state representative, Peter Abarno at 69.79% of the vote and Timothy Zahn, 30.03% of the vote. Uh, again, Abarno is a, a pretty established um, elected official. He's a current Centralia City Councilman. Zahn is uh, an, an up and comer. He's only served as a precinct officer within the Democratic Party. Uh, so. Again, somebody I would expect to see uh, run again in the future as they establish more experience. Okay, moving on. Next up, we've got the position two for our District 20 State Representative, Ed Orcutt, 71.86% of the vote. Will Rawl at 27.94% of the vote. Orcutt has held the position for 18 years. So again, uh, Will Rawlett is a, a newcomer with a pretty steep hill to climb to um, unseat that incumbent. Okay. 
Next up, we're going to take a look at District 35, Position 1. Dan Griffey has 56.29% of the vote and Colton Myers 43.61% of the vote. That's a little closer than I thought it might be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it seems like, at least with some of these results, we might be seeing a bit of a, a blue wave, a, a, you know, as the national races are put in, pushing a lot of Democrats in Washington the, to the polls. And Myers especially was critical of Griffey for his positions on LGBT and immigrant rights, um, refusal to affirm Black Lives Matter. So that might have uh, resonated with uh, especially a lot of Democrats heading to the polls this year. Okay. And next up is the um, position two for District 35, Drew McEwen with 54.44% of the, uh, the vote, Darcy Huffman 45.46% of the vote. Yeah, so again, uh, closer given that McEwen is the incumbent, he's served since 2014, but he's also notable for being one of the people who uh, sued Governor Inslee over the stay at home order. Uh, so uh, for again, if we are seeing a lot of energized Democrats at the poll, um, uh, they that might be leading uh, Darcy Huffton to be polling closer than we might expect. Okay, so Alexis, I'm going to ask you to hang on a little bit. We have some candidates who have joined us and we're glad to have them with us tonight. I believe we have Michael Stedman joining us. Oh, he's getting How's ready. <laughs> Hi, Michael. How we caught that? you while you were adjusting your camera. Yes. How you doing? Well, uh, feeling great, up by 5,000 votes, I think it was, and 4%. Um, you know, Gary's been in, in the um, area and, and, and in and out of office for 40 plus years. and. But I, I think our message really resonated with the residents of, you know, um, we can we can be better partners and and uh, elevate the quality of life for everybody in, in Thurston County. I'm not taking anything away from Gary and what he's done in his career for the region. Good on him, but we can do better. Um, and that again, taking nothing away from him, um, you know. I'm all about small business and everybody being represented from top to bottom. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's all about making the, our region a, a, not just a place to live, but a home. And everything important to me is here. And if everybody's prospering, then my family and the people I care about, the ones closest to me, they're um, likewise uh, gonna prosper and, and benefit too. So are there folks that you would like to kind of lift up and give some props to who've helped you with your campaign? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, whenever you go down that road, you're already always going to leave somebody out. But, you know, Senator Sam Hunt, um, Denny Heck, uh, Stephen Drew, Lori Dolan, the list goes on and on. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty overwhelming, but uh, I, I'm ready to get to work because there's a lot, that, a lot of improvement that can be done. Um, and again, it's just going to elevate everybody's quality of life. And uh, so I'm excited for that opportunity. And I'm really thankful to the residents for entrusting me um, to, to do that work. It's, um, it's something I'm very passionate about. And uh, I just love our community. And, and, it, and it's good to feel that love reciprocated. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you get back to whoever you're having this evening with. Uh, and congratulations, uh, and we'll look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you so much. Take care, Michael. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Okay, and I think we also have another candidate. Oop, I'm losing my earpiece here. It feels, it feels very, there we go. Um, and we have Scott off with us. Hi, Scott, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. I'm just, I'm, I'm glad to be here tonight. I, I wish results were different, but I understand what, where we're at. And I'm very thankful that we are going to have a great judge in Thurston County with Sharonda Amamio. She has done a great job in her campaign. I'm really excited to see her on the bench. I think she's going to do a great job. And so I, I'm, I'm very thankful for the, my supporters. Uh, my wife has been very uh, instrumental in my race, as well as uh, Robert Osbaugh, my treasurer, and my campaign consultant, John Winkler. I'm very happy with, with the work that they've done. And, you know, we, we wish for different results, but I'm very, very proud that, that the campaign we ran and I'm very proud of that we're going to have a great judge in, in Sharonda. Okay. So um, was there anything in particular about the campaigning process that surprised you? 
you know, it's, it's, it's a different year. It's 2020. Uh, you know, when I ran the first time for Olympia Municipal Court, I probably doorbelled up to 10,000 houses. This year, I was not able to do any of that. So, you know, with the judge, people don't get to know you. And so trying to, to work um, through this process is, is a lot different. Uh, I've been a judge for a long time now. And it's, it is a different, different animal that we're dealing with this year. But I'm, I'm you know, it was a good process in the times that I got to, to meet with Sharonda and others as we were going through the campaign process, it was, it was very good. And I, you know, it, I think we had four great candidates for su Superior Court and I'm, I'm glad that Sharonda is gonna be there. I think she's gonna do an excellent job. Okay, well, I wanna thank you for putting your hat into the ring. Um, the fact that people step forward to run for these positions, I think is, you know, it's an amazing thing. Uh, and best of luck to you in the future. All right, I appreciate it, thank Thanks you. for joining us. Take care. All right, and now joining us, we have Sam Hunt, Senator, State Senator Sam. Whoop, I'm tangled up. I think we might have lost Sam. Is he there? We lost Sam, no. Oh, there he is. We found him. There's Sam. Hi, Sam. How are you? Good. I think Lori's on her way, too. I know. We're, we're expecting that, too. So this is yeah. one time when I'm going to tell you you don't have to take the sign down behind you. Oh, that's right. Look at that. Oh, well. <laughs> So congratulations, uh, tonight's you. going your direction. Yeah, I'm very, very pleased with that. I looked, it was something over 70%, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, so um, tell us, you know, are there folks that you would like to hold up and um, give some props to for supporting your campaign or for being involved in your campaign? Well, I think, uh, I think my seatmate, Lori Dolan, and my soon-to-be seatmate, Jessica Bateman, uh, my wonderful, talented, skilled, and excellent campaign manager, uh, somebody named Hillary Hunt, who happens to be my daughter, and uh, Jim Cooper and Molly, Molly Sullivan, and a whole group of people. You know, Lori and Jessica and I worked closely with uh, uh, Carolina Mejia and Mike Stedman on the campaign as well. And, uh, you know, I think we were able to uh, put together a very good campaign. I'd also like to uh, thank my opponent, Gary Holland. I know, you know, Gary ran a good campaign. It's a tough district and it's a tough year mm -hmm. to run when you can't doorbell and hold in-person fundraisers and do all that sort of stuff. Uh, he stayed on the issues, which I think is very important. And I want to thank him for raising those issues. So, um, Sam, I mean, you brought up, I mean, everybody recognizes that this is, this is a year like no other with COVID. And, um, you know, we've done, we've done so many candidate forums and this exact formula here with, you yeah. know, a host on one side of the camera and the, and the candidate on the Zoom. So um, how, did you, how did you modify your campaign to, to meet this challenge? Well, I call it uh, campaigns and government by Hollywood Squares. <laughs> When the yellow square lights up, you talk, you know, and you try to buy somebody for the block or something. No, seriously, it uh, it was drastically different. You know, I had uh, I had two fundraisers that I did on Zoom, and uh, relied a lot more on email and uh, personal contact through email and uh, and phone and Facebook and other social media in order to try to get the word out. And uh, it was very different for me as it was, you know, for everybody else. And, uh, you know, it was a, an interesting struggle. Okay. So is there, is there anything in particular? Well, and of course, let me, let me collect my thoughts now. Um, going into the legislative session, it's going to be very different. Since you're an incumbent, yes. I, have there been discussions about how the ledge is going to function uh, in the yes, sir, era of We've COVID? Had a lot of discussions. And by the way, I want to thank you or congratulate you on your anniversary with TCTV. Oh, th thank you. Uh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We are working the House and the Senate uh, to try to figure out how you have a session. I think most of it's going to, I, I know most of it's going to be remote or virtual. For instance, we will, at this time, planning says there will not be all senators on the floor, and I assume all House members on the floor at one time. There are big flat screen TVs at the dais in front of the chambers. And, uh, you know, some members will speak on the floor. Some members will uh, be in their offices. Some will probably be remote. If, if you live in Bellingham or Oak Harbor or somewhere, you may well not come down here every day. You may do session uh, 
through your through your laptop and, and on online. Mm -hmm. uh, it appears committee meetings will all be virtual committee meetings and we won't be moving into the you know, hearing rooms and, and sitting around there. It's going to be very tough for uh, citizen and lobbyist contact. Uh, we're going to have to in invent whole new ways to do that because we aren't going to be, you know, we can't be, what do you say, trapped or grabbed in the hallway and, you know, having meetings. I think we'll obviously have lots of meetings by Zoom, but the the casual conversation is going to be very difficult. And, you know, even when it comes to caucuses, our caucuses will probably be virtual rather than, I know they'll be virtual, rather than us all crammed in, in you know, little rooms talking about bills and, and things. So it, it's a whole new process for us. It's a whole new process for everybody else. And I think we just sort of feel our way along each day and, and try to figure out how it works. Okay. Well, Sam, I want to thank you for being with us tonight and congratulations again. Thank you. Best of luck in the next legislative it's session because be it's, it's going to be a challenge. To all we're, we're all dealing with it. Yeah. And thank you to all the people at 22nd that put confidence in me for another term. I, I really honor that. And I try to remember every day when I see that building that there's only 147 of us who are voting and dealing with the uh, issues that impact 7 million people in the state of Washington. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sam. We're okay. going to take a brief break right now, and we'll be back uh, more with Alexis Walker to talk about the results tonight, and we hope to have some more candidates joining us. Stay tuned. The first returns. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The First Returns. I'm Deborah Vinsel. Hey, we're going to recap the results right now, starting with uh, the Greater Thurston County races. So for Thurston County Commissioner District 1, Carolina Mejia with a resounding uh, a lead today, 61% of the vote. C. Davis with 38.63% of the vote. Next up, Gary Edwards, the incumbent, 47.41% of the vote. Michael Stedman with 52.25% of the vote. And it's yeah, I'm pretty certain that these this result will last will stand because of the high voter turnout uh, prior to tonight's election. Moving on with the Thurston County Superior Court position eight, Sharonda D. Amamio has 59.98 percent of the vote. Scott Alf 39.47 percent of the vote. In the state representative district 22 position one race, incumbent Lori Dolan will be returning to her seat with 69.98 percent of the vote. J.D. Ingram with 30.2 percent of the vote. State Representative District 22, Position 2, this was an open seat. Dusty Pierpoint with 36.64 percent of the vote and Jessica Bateman has 63.27 percent of the vote. Sam Hunt in the State Senator for District 22 will be coming back to office with 70.52 percent of the vote. His opponent, Gary Holland, with 29.38 percent of the vote. In the surrounding districts, District 2 State Representative Position 2, J.T. Wilcox returns with 64.64% of the vote. Veronica Rocket, 35.13% of the vote. For State Senator in District 2, Rick Payne, 37.33% of the vote. Jim McCune with 62.46% of the vote. State Representative District 20, Position 1, Peter Abarno with 69.79% of the vote. Timothy Zahn has 30.03% of the vote. Position 2 in District 20, Ed Orcutt, 71.86% of the vote. Will Rollett with 27.94% of the vote. And in District 35, State Representative Position 1, Dan Griffey has 56.29% of the vote. Colton Myers, 43.61% of the vote.
And last but not least, the position two in District 35, Drew McEwen with 54.44% of the vote and Darcy Huffman with 45.46% of the vote. So those are our, the recaps. So Alexis, any surprises? Oops, I think you're muted. There, let's try that again. Everybody there? Okay, could have been on our end. Okay, let's try that again. Any surprises? Uh, I think how closely uh, some of the uh, the races are when the with the incumbents, uh, but in general, uh, I think we see a, a, a marked turn towards Democrats, and in general, uh, with the what's going on nationally, and also such a high level of turnout, it's not surprising. Thank you, Deb, for inviting me. Okay. Okay. Hello. So, we have some extra, got some extra sound coming in there. So, hey, I did want to ask you about, um, we're going to take a quick look um, at the um, executive races. Um, Jay Inslee is, I'm looking at the Secretary of State's website, Jay Inslee currently has 59.57% of the vote. So, looks like he'll be returning to the governor's seat. And then in the, um, oops, i got to find that? it here. In Okay, and Can in I? the um, lieutenant governor's race, Danny Heck, hometown guy, here and our um, outgoing uh, congressman from the uh, 10th Congressional District with 47.31% of the vote, um, Mark Elias with 33.81% of the vote, and right in got 18% of the vote. I find that kind of intriguing. So those are what our state executive uh, races look like. Um, I'm going to stay with you for just a little bit more, Alexis. We do have a couple candidates who are waiting, but I, I do want to I do want to take just a moment to talk about Referendum 90. Um, this was the referendum about uh, sexual health education uh, that was very controversial, and the media around this was pretty, pretty extreme, I thought. Um, it is currently being approved by voters 50, oh, with almost 60% of the vote. Um, tell us a little bit about this referendum. Yeah, so referendums essentially are uh, allowing the voters to approve or disapprove of something that the legislature has done. Uh, so this referendum um, is uh, uh, approving or disapproving of a, a law passed uh, requiring more uh, comprehensive sexual education that's age appropriate in our public schools uh, with parents able to opt their children out of this education. Um, I think you're right to mention the sort of media conflict and challenge over this. This seemed to be the the source for a lot of the fake news and um, hysteria over over the referendum in Washington. And um, I think it it benefited it you know if it passes from um, happening during a presidential election um, with high sort of democratic motivation in this state. Had it been 2018, I think it would have had a, a lot more challenge. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to stand by um, for a little while. We've got a couple of candidates. Lori Dolan is joining us. So um, hi, Lori, and welcome to the program. And congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks to Thurston Community Media for hosting this tonight. It's a great way to connect with people right after the results come out, and I appreciate it. Well, you're most welcome. So do you have some folks you'd like to lift up and say thanks to who helped support your campaign? You know, there's a whole team of people in both the 22nd Legislative District and Thurston County. Um, we had a really big get out the um, vote effort. Uh, you probably saw people sign waving on corners and dro lit dropping. Didn't ring doorbells, but dropped lit literature on people's doorsteps. Um, we're delighted with the results here in Thurston County about our county commissioners. We're delighted with the 22nd results. I get to keep working with Sam Hunt. He is terrific. And now we get to welcome Jessica Bateman to the team and we're looking forward to that. I have to put in a plug for um, referendum 90. I am so happy that passed. I, I taught first grade in Spokane, Washington back in 1973 and I taught good touch, bad touch to my first graders and they came from really low socioeconomic houses. And one day I taught that and the next day a little girl came in and told me that her daddy had hurt her and I was with a DSHS social worker later that afternoon and undressing my little six-year-old and here are all these fresh cigarette burns all over this beautiful six-year-old's skin. And ever since 1973, I've been dedicated to making sure 
our children understand consent and they understand good touch, bad touch. And that's what this new curriculum will do for our kids. And luckily most parents teach their children that, but some parents actually abuse their children and children need to know to protect themselves. So I just have to say, I'm so happy about that as well. But okay. to the people, to the voters, um, to my constituents, I wanna say thank you. These are kind of weird jobs because you actually don't send out a resume and get hired by a hiring committee and stay for as many years as you want. You actually have to get rehired every two years. So I'd like to thank my constituents for rehiring me. I love this job and I'm excited to keep doing the work on their behalf. So thank you. Okay, well, congratulations again, Lori. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks. We look forward um, to seeing how this legislative session is gonna roll out. Sam Hunt kind of filled us in on some of the um, ins and outs of what may be happening in the age of COVID, but we do wish you the very best and the legislature the very best in this very unique situation that we find ourselves in. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Wear your masks. <laughs> Wear your mask. Thank you. Okay, that was Lori Dolan from District 22. Um, and so now um, we're bringing Alexis back in. Hi, Alexis. And I just, I need to take a minute just to clarify people talking in my ear are there any other candidates waiting okay I just didn't I didn't want to I didn't want to not uh, didn't want to short shrift anyone okay so we only have a few minutes left Alexis um, and I guess I want to uh, just ask you just overview um, your just general thoughts about what we've seen tonight and what we've experienced and I have blissfully not been watching the national news for the last hour and a half so I don't uh, no spoilers. I don't want to know what's going on yet. So, um, but but how? I mean, what's your general, just your overview of our local election? Well, I don't think I'm spoiling things to say that nationally we don't know much, right? That things are incredibly close, and we'll we'll be waiting to find out what happens. Uh, th th I think that's very different here in Thurston County, where we're seeing a very uh, a strong voice for uh, and support for Democratic candidates uh, uh, across the different offices. Um, and I think one of the big challenges now for uh, these uh, progressive candidates that, be that have been elected is uh, there's a lot that voters are wanting them to do, but we have a state facing a, a serious budget deficit as a result of the pandemic. So how are lawmakers going to deal with this major challenge while also trying to address uh, these uh, concerns that voters have elected them to take care of? Okay, so we have, um, you know, we've been a vote by mail state for over a decade, and I think that tonight we showed the rest of the country how it works. Yes, they should all be taking notes from us. <laughs> So, so do you, um, we had earlier, you mentioned a percentage of turnout. Um, was that statewide or was that here in Thurston County? You said something like 75%? That was in Thurston County, but not counting today. So I don't know, it, it would only go up um, from that, which mm -hmm. is And that's uh, amazing. That's, that's an incredible figure because I know in previous elections on, uh, like in the primary, you might have 25, maybe 30% counted day of and then it goes up to 50 or 60 percent as the ballots continue to be counted so way to go thurston county 75 percent of eligible voters turning in ballots that were counted and the results were announced tonight that's incredible that's incredible that that you know that a standing ovation to all of thurston county so well i want to thank you for joining us again alexis it's been uh, great to have you with us i love to hear your analysis of what's going on uh, and I greatly appreciate your time. So thanks so much for joining us. I hope we can do this again next year. And Deb, are you still there? Oh, Deb? somebody's talking to me. Deb? Yeah. Are, are you still there? I am still here. This is Gary Edwards, and I... you asked that I call in. Oh, hi, Gary. Oh, okay. We're going to oh. talk to Gary Edwards real quick. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Alaska, Alexis. Okay. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm doing super. How are you tonight? I'm fine. So we just announced some, we just announced some results. Interesting times. It is interesting times. So what are your thoughts? Yes. Well, uh, I think Mr. Stedman made a very good showing. I don't know that this is over yet. You know, this is a, a pretty close race. But you know who I think really did a good job tonight, it seems like, at least to me, is the county auditor to be able to put this all together uh, with 
all the stress and strain, if you will, on this unusual election and be able to come out with the numbers she's been able to come out with mm -hmm. this early in the election. Right. We were just, I was just talking with Alexis Walker that 75% of voters had turned in ballots that were counted and reported tonight. So that's an incredible feat. Yes. Well, and I, you know, it's great for Thurston County. So, yes, thumbs up to Mary Hall and her election staff for a great job. Yep. They did a great job. So, as, as far as, as the race with Mr. Sedman and myself, I really don't know what to tell you. Uh, I, I think it might be too early to tell. And the only reason I say that, there are so many write-in ballots out there. And I don't know if those have been counted yet or not. Mary Hall would probably know the answer right. to that, though, I well, suppose. And we know that the ballots will continue to be counted for the next couple of days. Anything that was received in, in um, drop boxes, I think, after 4 p.m. today, between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. will be counted tomorrow. And, of course, anything that was dropped in the U.S. mail today and was postmarked today won't be received for a day or two. So there are still ballots sure. to be counted. So, And I think the, that the... Um, uh, the election will be certified, I believe it's in 10 days to two weeks, something like that. I don't have the exact date right. in front of me, so anyway. Now, now, do you know, would Mary, uh, did she say that those ballots that are right in, they get set to the side, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. uh, have they counted those, or do they count those all at one time as well? Because I don't know how they decipher individual, you right. know, writing. Yeah. I, so, I, I don't, don't know have, the answer to that. I don't have the answer to that. That would be a good one mm -hmm. to ask the ask the auditor. So, um, sure. Why don't Why don't you ask Mary and see what <laughs> we'll she have, says about writing? We'll have to ask Mary. Aren't there quite a few this year? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, how many I, I believe there there's quite a few. There was uh, there was a race on the tenth congressional district, and for lieutenant governor, right, and there, uh, quite a. Quite a few write-ins. Right. For the lieutenant governor, I noticed that there were eight, there was 18, or was that the governor's race? There was 18, 18, 18 percent were write-ins. So I don't, I don't know how those are handled. So that's a, that's a question we'll have to ask the auditor. Well, thanks for joining us, Gary. I really appreciate you being here tonight and taking the time to join us. And we'll keep an eye on the results as they come in. Okay. Well, hopefully Mary Hall will have some answers and we'll know more in the next few days. In the next but, few uh, days. Thanks yeah, for joining my, us. My compliments to Mr. Stedman. Thanks for joining us, Gary. Take care. Okay. Well, and so are we have any other candidates? No other candidates. Okay. Well, that was a surprise. It was lovely to have uh, Commissioner Edwards join us. We're glad that, that he took that moment. And one of the nice things about the way we run Thurston Community Media is we allowed ourselves a little bit of extra time in case something like that happens. So we're not running up against a clock. But I do again want to thank Alexis Walker for joining us. Thanks to Commissioner John Hutchings for joining us and for Karen Tweet from the League of Women Voters uh, for adding to our program tonight and to all the candidates who called in and to all the candidates who threw their hat into the ring. It's, it's a big step to run for public office. So we've come to the end of the program. Uh, TC Media is grateful for the very long partnership that we've had with the League of Women Voters of Thurston County, uh, and we appreciate them so much. We want to thank them. Uh, for all of the hard work that they do to help educate voters. And we want to thank all of you for watching and for voting. Remember, your vote matters. From all of us here at Thurston Communi Community Media, thank you for voting. Thank you for joining us for the first returns. We'll see you again next year.